official drink and draw this week, I should say. I did an impromptu one on Wednesday. That was awesome. So originally, this was supposed to be Rachel Neal. Rachel had to drop out, unfortunately. But she got me a pretty good replacement, from what I can tell, as the one and only Joshua Harn. So Joshua, welcome to – oh, by the way, do you prefer Josh and Joshua? God, I feel so I, weird asking that question on my end now. Yeah, hey. Yeah. I feel like we should we should have, like, one each. Yes, Okay. Should uh, I, well, you're the host. Why don't you be Joshua? Okay, I'll, I'll Joshua. be Joshua. And you're Josh. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> it's still, still going to sound kind of awkward, weird, but that's, that's just the way it goes. Nice, yeah. to meet you, nice to meet you, Josh. Welcome to the yeah. show. Um, yeah. I don't know you as well as I know some of the other guests I've had, so why don't we do just a little quick introduction about who you are. Okay. Uh, well, my name is Joshua Harms. I'm a fine artist and guitar builder. Uh, based out of Victoria, BC, and I know in a roundabout way Joshua through my friend Rachel Neal, who I think has been on the podcast already. She has. She was my yeah. I, like when during the island before I turned this into an audio, which was just strictly an audio and a podcast for a while. Yeah. I wanted her on. I've known her. She's this really quiet, shy, but I just know with her, there's just things in her that just kind of want to get out. So yeah. what I I, 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 what I've been quietly encouraging, and if Rachel's watching this, yes, this has been my master plan from, for a long time with you, actually, is get her to the point where she's a little bit more comfortable expressing herself in public, um, mm -hmm. simply because I feel like she has things we're saying, but mm -hmm. much like most people I've dealt with i again i don't know you very well so we'll figure this out whether you what, what category you fall into on this one is that permission to talk that permission to like express yourself in the open i i think we always fear repercussions but i think the truth of the matter is um i think repercussions we shouldn't think about them as much as we do I think yeah. sometimes the right thing to do is just to say what you need to say, let it out, and don't be afraid to look foolish and mm -hmm. go out there. And because by doing that, you leave yourself open. Yes, you can get criticized, but you can also leave yourself open to a dialogue or a conversation you never would have had otherwise if you just stayed silent. And mm -hmm. we're here to communicate and say, hey, what's up? And, and, and figure out what the meaning to life, the universe, and everything. That's kind of how I see it anyways. And uh, so I got no problem looking foolish because the worst that can happen is you have a laugh, I have a laugh, and we'll forget about it and move on, right? Learn, learn a little bit in between. Yeah, exactly. That's it. I, 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 I had a so when I was when I was younger, and you, 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 you'll you'll understand this pain I'm sure. That during puberty when I was in like grade seven French class I went to French class and literally and literally the the, the one thing you are absolutely terrified of having happen happened. I ended up uh, going I was wearing these short shorts and like this like t-shirt that covered nothing. And on the way up to the front of the class, just nature ran its course, and suddenly everybody for everybody to see. And I did that. Took years to live down. Oh man! Well, yeah, yeah. You, that's I mean, such a rough time. Yeah, yeah, it really is, right? But, but here's the thing: I learned, like, the biggest thing, like, years later, like, I, I, I learned from it. And one of the things I learned is, like, really, at the end of the day, nobody really cares, yeah. right? It, it, I mean, we. Every one of us has been a fool, has been made to look foolish at some point or the other. Yeah. So why worry about it? Yeah, just wear that hat, you know? Yeah, exactly. You wear so many hats as it is. Why not just kind of roll with it? Exactly. And, and, it. and Yeah, and then eventually at some point people are going to say, that hat's no fun on you, and they get rid of it for you anyways. It's like, problem solved. <laughs> Right, but because it, it, it's when you can put yourself in a position where you can't, you don't get easily rattled, right? Or you're just like you're cool with pretty much everything. It's really hard to break you because you, you, yeah. you just you just you're just like, okay, I'm this, okay, I'm that. Now what? And everybody's yeah. like, uh, that wasn't expected. 
I think I think it it garners a lot of respect if you're able to just kind of be yourself openly and freely. Mm-hmm. Um, people people see it. Right? I think I, I had a friend in in middle school who you know I kind of went through that same th- that you know everyone goes through that and at some point in school where you're just kind of like trying to fit in, trying to be yourself or like figure out who yourself is in the first place. And I'm at this, you know, I was like trying to like, ah, I need to look a certain way. I need to, you know, fit in. And then I just made this friend uh, in, in your book. And I just ended up getting like sat next to him. And he was just like zip off shorts and like massive hoodies with graphic t-shirts. And he just didn't give, you know, any care to what other people thought of him. And it was so refreshing to just like sit next to this guy who didn't care at all and was just like he was an artist he was nerdy he was just a really funny guy yeah and it was just like oh man you know this is such a waste of time caring what other people think oh no it totally is like honest to god it totally is is the literally the worst thing you can do yeah i'm so i'm so glad that i met him especially at that time because like it was exactly what i needed Probably well, grade eight. Okay, so, so that probably 13, 13, 14, something like that. Somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah it's all good. Yeah. So I, I'm gonna ask you because okay, first off, I am jealous of your hair. That is an amazing, <laughs> amazing hair. Thank you. Right, right, right. But but the uh, but the other thing is, I have no idea how old you are. Like you feel like late twenties, okay. early thirties, but you could be older. You could be younger. Right. It's okay. kind of hard. It's kind of hard to peg you with age. So I'm kind of curious. We're playing that. We're playing that game. Well, yeah. I'm 23 years old. Dang. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's all the it's, beard. Yeah, it's the beard. It's totally the beard. Yeah. The fact that you got the full beard at 23, I can't do a full beard at 39. I'm jealous, dude. I'm so jealous. Uh, I don't know. I I chalk it up to my dad. He's he's got a good beard. So yeah, that's the best I've just kind of inherited Th- that's, that, that from that, him. That's totally cool. That's yeah. totally cool, man. That that's uh. No, I, I'm just curious cause where you're at. So you've been doing art then the whole time, like by, since by kid, a kid? Yeah, yeah. So I kind of like, so my mom is a graphic artist and a fine artist. She has done sculpting. She's done painting. She, for a brief while, was like looking to get into like the kind of concept sketching for fashion designers. Just really cool stuff. And and then my dad is also a photographer. And then on my mom's side, my grandparents are like woodworkers. And on my dad's side, um, like my grandpa is like a huge photographer. And so my dad is also a photographer. And so I always felt really comfortable with it. It was just kind of a normal, like a way to express, yeah. you know, no, totally- just like speaking. And so, you know, I was, I was always kind of encouraged to, to do those things. And so like finger painting and, and um, like playing with Play-Doh and stuff from like as early as I could walk. Um, and then it just kind of spiraled out of control from there. I just kept doing it. And there was a brief while, I think, in like elementary school where I was like that dinosaur kid. Oh, I was nice. so into. I was a nature nut. I grew up in nature, um, on some acreage in Sumas Mountain in Abbotsford, and then I kind of, as I grew up through elementary school and getting older, just kind of kept getting more and more concreted in my mind that like art is something I need to do. It's like an essential part of me that just needs to be honored, and so I just kind of kept taking it more and more seriously and um, eventually, you know, kind of committed it fully as like, this is what I'm going to do. And then, (laughs) and then, yeah. And so I've actually, I've kind of been split two ways now where I've, I've been pursuing um, fine art kind of full on for many years. And then I started getting into um, guitar. I started playing guitar. 
I've always been kind of musical. Um, and my parents really thought like, oh man, you know, Josh, you should do this. You should play a musical instrument. And I was just so stubborn. I was just like, oh, well, you told me to, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and then eventually, I think it was in yearbook. I, I just, you know, was a yearbook nerd all through school. And they they had a, um, a ukulele in the yearbook room, and I couldn't put it down. I just kept, like, I stayed late after school because I got picked up late. I just kept playing it and playing it, and I was like, man, this is kind of opening up a whole another creative outlet for me that I didn't know was really there. Um, and so at some point I was writing my own stuff on this ukulele. I had no idea how to play. I didn't know how to tune it. I was just like going for it. And um, someone ended up leaving a, like a post-it note on the ukulele with a song suggestion on it. Cause I kept on bugging the yearbook people with my like made up <laughs> two names and songs. And, and so I was like, man, okay, challenge accepted. But the song was for the guitar. And so I, I was like, okay, you know, I'm not gonna transpose this onto ukulele. I tried briefly, but four strings, six strings, you know, didn't work. And, and then I just, remember that okay i have a kind of a crummy acoustic guitar at home and so i just you know from there just kind of fell in love with it and immediately thought like as soon as i started playing like okay this is great and i i want you know i want this guitar and i want that guitar but there are things that i want that aren't out there and so i need to build it myself and so that's how it kind of started me down this path of like okay i'm going to be a luthier <laughs> and so I've kind of been juggling both of them at the same time. Um, uh, all I've lived in Kelowna for two years. That's how I got to know Rachel was through the sort of art community there. And um, during that time, I was doing an apprenticeship for for um, just building acoustic guitars and then eventually electric guitars. That's kind of what um, my creative kind of vision was leaning into was building electric guitars and all that time you know doing artwork to supplement my crappy minimum wage job and yeah and just kind of like trying to make do and juggle all of these different occupations and so that's kind of that's kind of where i'm at now i live in victoria and i've just kind of been continuing on that path yeah so Ooh, I could, I go a couple different ways here. Actually, first off, do you have a guitar I could see? That'd be kind of neat. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you bring it, bring it out, man. That'd be cool. Should I? Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah, go I'm ahead. Have to pick this up. So I kind of prepared this just because I thought this might come up, but yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try not to drop my expensive instrument. Yes. <laughs> I totally understand so, that. So this is this is the first guitar that I've designed myself. That's really cool. I built it through um, a school that's on Vancouver Island here called the Summit School of Guitar Building, and they're kind of one of the larger um, guitar schools in the Northwest. There's a few more. Um, kind of in Saskatchewan and then the States, but really like they had a high pedigree. They they had people coming from all over the world, people from Poland and Japan and like coming all the way over here to Vancouver Island to come to school, which is pretty incredible. Yeah, um, it's very incredible. If you sit there and think about it, that's, that, that means school's got a really good reputation. Yeah, it's pretty incredible what they built up. And then I built uh, wow. just like a very standard Les Paul. I changed the wiring a little bit, but um, yeah, this is just a replica of a 1959 Gibson Les Paul. It's got like the arch top and uh, carved it all myself and did all the finishing. I haven't finished the back plates yet, unfortunately, but. That, that's okay. That's still, that's still, that's amazing work, man. That's really amazing. Thank you. Yeah. 
Thank you. I, I probably can't afford you anytime soon, but once upon a time, I was going to actually get into an electric guitar. And my first one I had, uh, my girlfriend actually sold me her Fender. Uh, yeah. Fender is a sweet little electric guitar. It is so fun. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. But unfortunately, just the way things worked out, I, I had to give it up. Um, mm. Right. I've been, I've been pursuing like, like this has been for me a, 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 an exercise in um, growth as a as a creative. Because what my passion is is I want to do like I promised myself I wanted to get into comics way back like twenty years ago, and right. I've done a lot of cool things. I'm proud of this podcast. Uh, I've done five books. Like I, it's not like I haven't. That's awesome. Yeah, that it's not like I haven't done stuff. But I realized like during this time. And oh, this will come back to you in just a minute on this one. During this time, it's like I decided to expand my. This is why the drink and draw exists. It forces me to come out of my comfort zone, and I right. learn something every time I do something. Right. So, uh, did you watch any of the other ones I did? I showed you. I sent you. Yeah. Yeah. Which one? Which one was it? Which one did you like? Because they both were really good. I I thought I, I love on and and Richard was that was just wild fun. That 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 one was just like. I used to, I, used to, I he, he gave me a copy of it, the Castle Gray Skull, like My Little Pony thing he made. He, cool. he actually sent me a copy of it when it was over. It was just like that is a cool experience for me. So, Sweet. yeah. So I'm learning to come out of my comfort zone in art now. Some at some point, I have two artistic like long term goals. I'd like to get back. I would like to try music again at some point. The guitar, and probably and probably believe it or not. Um, Either a clarinet or a saxophone. Once upon a time, I could have gone. I could have gone. I think music. I wasn't ready for it. Simply again, partly it was just mindset growing up. But my teacher said, like the discipline of the art would do you a lot of good. And now mm -hmm. that I'm older slash wiser ish, well, whatever, right? But as long mm -hmm. as I'm older and wiser, I recognize like any art that forces you to practice and give you a regular little bit of discipline is actually very, very helpful for any artist, whether you're a writer. Yeah. Or whether, like, that, like I imagine like, I, I, I'm like, I imagine that your drawings, your paintings, you know, some of the other things you've done when you were younger have definitely benefited you when you actually built your guitars. Because oh, yeah. I, yeah, because the discipline muscles that you built when you were younger probably transferred over very much when you started doing that am i right on that oh yeah yeah and i think like part of me thinks that well you know i'm pursuing two very different careers um they're both an art form but i think like because i knew as soon as i started getting these feelings of like man i'd love to build a guitar i'd love to like kind of share that with the world um i knew like this is gonna i'm gonna come to a crossroads and i'm gonna have to figure it out like because they're both so close to me how do i juggle that um and so i think for me i i got to this point where it was like well i was trying out more different artistic practices branching out like i had mostly only used acrylic paints before and I was really interested in trying out oils. And obviously, like, well, not obviously, I guess, like, I'm most comfortable in the sketching format, graphite erasers, needle erasers, like, that's my home. That's what I was kind of brought up with. Um, and I found that the more um, disciplines I took on, the more I learned about different kind of outlets of creating artwork, the more my kind of existing skills increased. Mm -hmm. Like as I learned how to oil paint, my acrylic painting got better. As I learned how to paint better, my sketching got better. As I sketched better, like my painting got better. It just all kind of like keeps going up in its in its own little way. And and that too with the guitar. Um I find that like something to do with um like you know warming up in in an artistic practice you spend i don't know everyone's different five or ten minutes 20 minutes doing just like 
doodles and sketches and then you kind of settle into the piece that you're doing uh i find that guitar is a really good way to warm up um or vice versa if you're drawing drawing is a really good way to warm up for guitar and so because you're just you know it's all that mind body connection so actually, I would say I was going to ask this question. I think this is an interesting one for you. I reckon so. So at some point, about because I've been podcasting and I've been running books. I've been podcasting for about five years and been writing for a lot longer. Yeah. I, right. Um, but I, at some point, what I did was I asked myself this question: What do my what does my writing and my podcasting have in common? Mm. Right. Because I I find like. Don't get me wrong, like technic from a just purely technical point of view, they are completely different spectrums. Yeah. Yeah. But from from the discipline of how you put it together, they're not really that different. Dude, but what I've learned is it's more of how so my podcast brain, I, I ask questions. I I find like because I've interviewed so many people, mm -hmm. I get a better figure about who my characters are i have yeah. a clear understanding of who they are and who they're not because i've interviewed so many real life people and i've heard their stories on and on and on and i'm always fascinated by what i listen to so my podcasting aids my empathy with all my characters when i write my story and it's a really so neat, interesting right it, it makes sense though right yeah. right so it makes sense and vice versa my writing be made my writing creates um especially when it, basically what all, all artists are problem solvers on um, like on <laughs> some level or another we're all problem solvers that's what we do we are yeah. looking at it we are looking at a situation and we're like okay how do we fix this like when you're building a guitar right i mean i probably the most interesting thing about you is you're like different wood creates a different sound absolutely that's fascinating right because yeah. how does that work and what happens when i mix and match these different things together what kind of sounds can i make and maybe just maybe by just doing that experimentation you discover a brand new sound that's never been done or absolutely right and that that's a big part like that's a big part of what you do and when you're drawing drawing structure I go. I, I think I, like my first aunt taught me like when the very first thing she said. One of the first things she said was that everything's about little circles, squares, and triangles. And when you start looking at art that way, like sketching that way, it simplifies. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot more to it than that. But that's well, you're cool. just breaking down form, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's a heck of a foundation to start with. Now figuring out emotion, storytelling, those kind of things are going to take a lot more practice than what I currently am at. Mm. But, but I understand like now suddenly I don't see it, or it would terrify me, but now I'm like, I understand something about it, right? And same thing, writing's got little bits of forms and functions and, and, and themselves, like everything has something in common. So maybe what I should ask you Looking at your different disciplines, what do they have in common? What you might find is they may not be so different after all. What they might be is different expressions of the same thing. Oh, and yeah. Th is that neat? Like that's it's just a th it's a thought for you to actually put yeah. on going forward, right? Right. Don't look like technically obviously there's no there's no um there are, I mean, at a very base level, there might be some similarities, but obviously technically they're very different things. But in yeah. terms of what you're actually doing with them, right, you might find it's not that different. No, and, and it, it's it's yeah. just different enough yeah. that they complement each other. Exactly. And I'm able to do both of them in tandem, and they kind of fulfill two sides of me. Exactly. Um, and I think I'm really lucky to have that because it means that when I get burnt out of one thing, I have a different discipline that I can go to that is still satisfying me creatively, but in a different way. So what, what would the similarities be? 
to answer your question. Yeah. I'd say I'm, I'm conveying something through a final product. Yes. Um, I am creating an image or a final piece that has a feeling and an emotion in my head that speaks of uh, aesthetic or um, a, like whatever it could be. And through the process, I'm choosing line, I'm choosing material, I'm choosing um, all of these things to come together at the end to convey a certain thing. With my guitars, obviously, this is not a standard shape for an electric guitar. No, it's not. <laughs> this is not your Fender or Gibson. This is a very different thing. My goal with that, and that body, that shape is a little bit more um, abstract than some of my other stuff. That was just kind of a first. I wanted to jump in and try something totally different because um, I'd built a few very standard guitars already before that one. And what I wanted to do with these guitars that I'm designing is to create a blank canvas. And what I mean by that is when you pick up a guitar that has a heritage, like a Stratocaster, a Fender Stratocaster, or a Gibson Les Paul, you have all of this musical history that comes with that guitar that's influencing you without really knowing it, right? Jimi Hendrix, Steve Ray Vaughan, Buddy Guy, all of these guys that play Stratocasters, you sit down with this guitar and you kind of have that music in your head and you're just like, this is what it sounds like. This is what it makes me want to play like. But for writing your own music, it can be hard because if you're trying to create original pieces and you're coming to that place trying to write something with a guitar that makes you want to play like someone else then it can be a really useful tool to come and just sit down with a guitar that is you have no idea what it's supposed to sound like all you have is what it sounds like what it feels like and i find that um, at least for me, I mean, obviously I'm biased, but when I pick up that guitar, I can write my own music. When I pick up any of my other kind of existing models, I kind of feel railroaded into doing a certain thing. Interesting. Um, Interesting. And so that, that kind of was a bit of a departure from no, your no, question. It, it, no, I, 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 so let me, let me, let me see if I can, they maybe simplify this Sim simple thought. I mean, I was probably not exactly right. It won't be quite right, but it's, it's just, it's my thought. And then we, we, then we'll get to what, then we'll talk about your art in a little bit. And then we'll get into the actual drawing. Cause we do, we do draw on this in this episode. Oh, yeah. But um, it seems to me what, like what your art and your guitars have in common is they create an experience for your customer, whoever you yeah. like about an experience. Your guitars is all about okay. It's not just the look; it's the sound, and like you were talking about the sound and feel, the history, the story of that instrument, that kind of instrument, where it comes from, where it goes. And I guess, and my guess with you is, you're a guy that likes to explore different, all these different mediums, kind of find your own your own style, whatever fits for you. And the reason yeah. I think you're more comfortable with that guitar over the others, a couple reasons. One is it's sentiment. It was your first, and no matter how, what, what what guitars you make down the road, that one's always going to have a piece of your heart. It's like your first love because you. I mean, that one was your baby, and that is, and that is, and you will always be proud of it, no matter how far along in the journey you get to. Because from without that guitar, no matter where you go from here, you wouldn't have gone there. So that that is yeah. a big piece of where you came from but also where you're going. You want to go kind of down that stratosphere of your kind of, I want to figure out 
who I am in this. So maybe someday, maybe maybe in about 10 years, not, I won't just see Joshua Harms, guitar maker, maybe guitar player. Maybe you'll, you'll be singing on the stage somewhere. And, I have actually recently joined the band. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's possible, right? Yeah. But, that's, but, that's the big, but see, you're the guy, you're the guy that's here because you have all these different gifts you're searching for the right way to express yourself and for you like you love the disciplines because you you learn about how to do things and you love that because you're a problem solver at heart no oh, yeah but, but but you also love that fact because it's another tool to actually unlock the in, the internet of what you care about what you're passionate about and expressing it in a way that has not necessarily been done before because that's a neat challenge too can you like how you express the story that has already been told well if you did it like everybody else did that'd be boring and mm -hmm. that's why you can write music on that guitar because that that guitar is not like anything else out there there mm -hmm. go it's you stand out that's my guess just off the yeah. top of my head no yeah you, you really got it it's yeah it's it's that whatever it is i want to do i'm painting a, a story i'm trying to convey an emotion um whether that's like with my pieces of artwork that are you know they're all different topics and you know i've gone through a bunch of different styles over the years but yeah just kind of trying to create a narrative with my whatever it is that i create i think that's really powerful that you can pick something up and kind of get something from it you create a feedback loop between the art piece and the person viewing it exactly exactly no and, that, and that's and that's i mean after all all art at the end of the day is about who you share it with because it's not yeah. just about it's not just about making the art it's about the impact it has from people around you when it's not quite yours anymore even though yeah. on some level it will always be yours because you brought it into the world and that's kind of and that's an, and that's a very neat relationship and yeah man i i, I mean this is a drink and draw so we're going to get to the drawing start soon but uh yeah, yeah we're at 32 already <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but uh but at that at that point i will say this at some point down the road definitely come back on the show we'll do like there's just more of a more of a standard interview kind of deal definitely love to have you back that'd be oh, cool too. absolutely that'd be yeah. awesome so but we are going to do drink and draw so ladies and gentlemen i am going to, now every every time i do this the focus is always on the, my guest because my guest is he has done this far more than i have and that doesn't mean i'm not going to draw because i am going to draw and you will see it at the end of the episode right yeah. whatever i tell whatever i do is like for me i'm doing mr grinch so I love, and I'll talk about this a real quick before we get to this, probably another 20 minutes, but whatever, it doesn't matter. This is a stream and we can go wherever we go. Um, I love the simple styles of Dr. Seuss. I love Stan Sakai. I love Charles Schultz. I love those mm -hmm. guys that come up with their, their own animated iconic styles. I, I look at those guys in particular. Um, Chuck Jones was a genius. He understood eyes. He understood language, how to convey Dr. Seuss. He understood yeah, okay. how color, how color impacts everything. You look at Mr. Grinch. He's like the evilest green guy. Like I mean, the, the evil, sickly green. Those the grin. Yeah, the, the grin. Eyes. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know there's something off with him. And you know that five seconds like that looking at him. Right. Oh, yeah. Right, you just know it, and, and and that's genius. I I, I think the fact that you know, okay, you look at okay, I said Stan Sakai, you saw Jimbo, the serious rabbit Ronan Samurai that's just doing rights. I mean, he looks and he carries like you saw he carries himself like a warrior, and you can tell that even though he's a rabbit, it's an anamorphic style. It's really simplistic. Stan's a genius because you can just see like. The storytelling in those particular art forms, even Charles Schultz, Charlie Brown, Lucy Lyon, like they're not complicated drawings technically, but in the, the emotions they convey, the storytelling, I think they're ingenious problem solvers. 
Right. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. 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 It's I I was recently I've been, you know, in the depths of quarantine part 2 and whatnot. I've been looking a lot into comedy. Um just, you know, mm-hmm. it's a happy thing. It's uplifting. Yeah. And was looking at a, a short kind of documentary piece about Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean, mm-hmm. and how he, it's, it, there's a lot of similarity there in the sense that he's very good at, without even using words, creating a character, uh, something that is so easily related to without even the use of words, just the, an expression or the way he moves. Um, I think that's something that kind of all artists share is this kind of drive to convey something as clearly as possible, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think, okay, Mr. Bean, everything is the facials. Everything's the facials, how he reacts. He's got, he's, I mean, he, the smile, the scowls, the, 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 the way he reacts to the stimulus around him, you get a sense that you, you, you get a sense that Mr. Bean's not um he's not quite all there. Like I mean, like you get that pressure <laughs> yeah. down very much. He's not quite all there. But like I, I think about the one that always got me was the one where he did the test, the trigonomic there's a there was a test he was supposed to do and he got the wrong test. And the same thing to do would have been just to go, Hey, listen, I, this isn't what I thought it was. Yeah. Instead, he tries to cheat. He tries to copy from people across from him. He tries to like do everything. Is that the one where he just slides off to the guy next to him? Yes. <laughs> and you're like, so you're good. looking at this, and you're going, "You are the smartest dumb person I've ever seen in my life." Like, just the the yeah. logical thing is, I, I am I in the wrong class? I mean, is I in the wrong class because I've got this test and I thought this was supposed to be? That would have been the logical thing to say. Yeah. Right. But but he that wasn't what he said. He just kind of like, well, I got to do this. I got to pass. I'm taking a test that I I had nothing to do with, so it doesn't it shouldn't impact me whether I finish this or not. He tries to cheat to succeed and to slide over. I'm like, it's just like, okay, you're you're definitely you're definitely um, somebody. And, and that's and the, and the thing is, we're trying to convey feelings. And so with Mr. Green, you're like, there's that combination of mortification. Some of the things he does just mortify. Like, there's a bit of like a little horror in him, just a little bit. What are you well, doing? it's scary, right? It's a reality yeah. that you don't want to be in, right? Yeah. You don't want to be with the turkey on your head. You don't want to be brushing your teeth on your way to work and your beetle. You know, yeah. putting on your socks and <laughs> or getting stuck out the in window. an elevator with, and just like just trying to do whatever you can to keep yourself sane. Like well, all these yeah. things that can really happen, you see it and you go, "Whoa!" Right? And and it's like, but that's the genius. Like because he doesn't say a word. It's something he doesn't say a word. He says so much without saying it. I I, I find as again as I get older, I don't want to write a big story anymore. I like writing a small story and see if I can compress as much stuff inside mm. that story as I can. Yeah, put a lot right. of weight into it. Yeah, 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 wait, 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 wait's more important. Um, I look at, okay, from art standpoint, Terry Moore, Strangers in Paradise, Rachel Rising, his frames are all the same size. Mm. At, at that little trick adds so much gravity to each book. His books are like 18 pages. But they feel like 30 page comics because the gravity is just, I have never complained about paying for a Terry Moore comic ever because Mm -hmm. Terry Moore is good at what he does. And he's really like, you know, that's it. It, But in his interiors are so good. His stories are so much fun. And he terrifies me that he's come up with so many creative ways to murder people throughout his comic that make me go. I asked him the other day, I was like, do you have to research any of this? It's like, nope, nope. I've only had to do one bit of research the whole time I've tried to kill somebody. I'm like, damn. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a scary thing to be really good at coming up with. Yes. But that's but that's what but he's also one of the most accomplished like honestly, I've had him on the podcast. He's one of the most accomplished, sweet 
talented dudes I've ever had. That's so he he earns he has earned all his success in the comic industry. But you, my friend, set like from what I from what I can tell, do a lot of like trees, do a lot of nature stuff. Like that yeah. seems to be what speaks to you. So, that's actually what I'm gonna be doing today, if that's all right. That's today, dude. dude yeah, we're gonna you're, you're gonna be the focus on you're gonna be the focus today. So when we when we shift the camera to your art, that's gonna be like, and we'll still probably be talking off and on while we'll, people watch you sketch. But why yeah. trees? Why trees? If you don't mind my asking, like, what 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 is it with you with the tree with, with trees? That's a good question. For me, it's I I grew up in nature. I grew up in a kind of a intergenerational co-housing like with my grandparents and cousins and they bought property on Sumas Mountain and so we built a house out of wood that was harvested from that property and I grew up there with all of my family for I think until I was 14 or 15 and so just like my reality wasn't of media social media games i didn't have any consoles it was me in the outdoors me in the pond walking through the forest with my opa exploring the creeks and like that was my reality i i remember there was a pretty profound moment where i think it was like at a show and tell or something in like elementary school where everyone was like oh man I want to go to Disneyland. Disneyland is so cool. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the teacher asked me like, oh, Josh, do you want to go to Disneyland? I said, no, Disneyland is in my backyard. <laughs> and here I'm like, what, probably seven or eight years old saying this profound stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but that was just my reality. It's like, that's where the good stuff was. Like, that's the magic looking is. under logs and rocks and stuff. And so coming back to that, I think... It's been a more recent, like I've always done some landscapes, but more recently I'm fascinated by it because with the global world situation with COVID and all of that, I find that um, it's an escape. It takes me back to a place that is more peaceful and more grounded. And especially like last summer I injured my leg biking away from a bear that's a story for another time that's story for another podcast for but sure. but um i was stuck like i was stuck in quarantine and i also like couldn't walk for a good few months um i had badly pulled a muscle in my leg and so sitting in my bedroom all i wanted you always want what you can't have all i wanted was to be out on my bike just in the forest on my own feeling the fresh air on my face and so that's what i started doing artwork of just really heavily just like sketching forests painting forests using it all as reference images and yeah so i've just been really feeling it lately and i it's something that hasn't bored me yet so i just keep doing it well there's something there's nothing wrong with any of that so how are you going to do it today are so are you gonna, in uh, terms of like setup or yeah, in terms of setup are you painting are you sketching or what are you going to be doing today? so i've got some frames lying around i've got them in the four by six format so i've got a little page here just kind of mm -hmm. blanked out with some four by sixes and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna kind of go nuts Good i'll stuff. set up the camera um it'll be a little bit hodgepodge I, it no, involves no, no, elastic no, no, bands no, no, and a lamp but <laughs> no 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 i hey, listen this is the just joshing podcast hodgepodge and can't, like, look where we've talked about the whole gamut so far there hasn't <laughs> and, and, and as you know i didn't come to you with any like preconceived questions we just started talking hey highland fire welcome back buddy so oh nice yeah he's 13 and he, he's he's been watching all my guests different come on on the show so if you want to say a quick hello to highland fighter you can go do so you'd like hello highland yeah. fighter this is joshua nice you. this is joshua harms joshua is a artist of very many counties you missed his guitars you missed his guitars they were they were i, I got him sitting right here <laughs> yeah. do you want to see his guitar no that's that's his 
so it's this is a headless instrument which means that the tuners are built into the bridge so it's a fairly non-standard shape but maybe at the end highland maybe at the end maybe we can coax him in trying a song maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe. i don't I know if the audio that. would pick it up too good yeah i've just yeah. got the headphones but. no it's fair enough so we're, we're going to, to the drawing part so for those people wondering like this is my setup right here a magical red notebook that my sister made me called new beginning yeah. sweet yeah so i've been just you know so i i did i did my first dragon piece you saw my my little pony piece on on the uh on the on the on the facebook I, i'll be posting that at the end like whatever i draw which for me today will be mr grinch that's what i'm doing i'm doing mr grinch right because it's christmas and i and i i told you why i love this style so much i hope that makes sense to you why i do and uh, that's what i'm going to be working on Sweet. and we're going to we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna set, set you up now then we're going to okay. go the camera's going to go completely over that way okay am i able to turn my camera around uh, i don't know we'll see nope Okay, we're just gonna roll with it. We're gonna roll with it. That's right. <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit shaky. It does involve some plastic. No worries. Plastic bands and you know. We're gonna go. With we're, 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 we'll see. We're tipping completely over to you for the next little bit while we start drawing. And as for me, I am doing Mr. Grinch. Specifically, Mr. Grinch and the dog he ties up as a reindeer. Because that just seems awesome. Well, to me. That's so fitting. Yes. Why not? Right. Okay. I, like, is it so weird that I look at his Santa hat and just see a bunch of clouds with a lot of like shapes in between, like his Santa outfit? Because I just like he did the like the whole white stuff, like they look like clouds. So I'm like. I think this is progress. We're making progress. We're making progress. <laughs> I, you know, I did try and find like a stand of some sort, but have not yet been able to do so. It's okay, man. So we're gonna be going with the lamp. <laughs> nice. All right, so how's this how's this view? Let's take a quick look here. That looks good. That looks good. Sweet. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm doing the best I can here to get a good view. Yeah. So right now I've done a, a couple of these smaller pieces and i think eventually what i'll do is i'll turn them into larger pieces i've always had a tendency to work small five by seven and, and just little sketches and whatnot so stuff like this is sort of my home ah. and um I'm just going to kind of, I have all this stuff just right close by. So I'm just going to lay it out there. No worries. No worries. So people can just see what you, what, what you've done. And, and I mean, that's part of the fun as well. Part of my process is I, I'm not a fan of realism in no. artwork. I really like it when you can look at a piece of art and really kind of, you just get a sense of the person's style. Um, and so whenever I do a piece, whenever I'm working from a reference image, yeah, I really like to just kind of view it like, okay, whatever it is that I'm doing here, it's going to be through my filter. It's going to, I don't really have a choice because anything you make is going to kind of end up looking like you made it. Um, yeah. but just paying attention to that in the sense that 
I can lean into it. I can play to that. Wow. I, 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 to me, I, I, it's amazing. Like, I just, I just drew the Grinch's head here. I'm going to show you guys, I'll show you when this is done, my end. It's amazing. I, I said, I'm even always in awe of just how, um, it's so simple on one hand, but so genius on the other. Just because right. I, no one, no one, I think simplicity is so, um, I think it's just in general, is so taken for granted. And, and I think well, the best stuff is, I think the best stuff is usually the simplest, which I think is really, really interesting. Again, it's just fascinating to me. Uh, that's, yeah, it's such an interesting topic. And you go back to, you know, the masters, right? Looking at some of Klimt's work, uh, Klimt is a big influence of mine. Um, his roots are in this very realist style. Yeah. As far as I know, I'm by no means an art history. You know, I don't really know my stuff, but from what I understand, that's kind of the the idea. And looking at these paintings like they're incredible they look like photographs and then you go and you look at the work that's his that everyone knows him for and it's nowhere close to realism he's painting very stylized figures and pointillism using colors that aren't really pr as present in the human skin tone these elaborate backgrounds and kind of like almost characterizing the figures. And those are the pieces that everyone knows him for. And so it just kind of goes to show how it's the individuality that you bring to the table as an artist that people are really looking for. And that really kind of hold most weight yes i i i i like the one thing i learned about like one of the best writing pieces of writing advice i ever got was write something that only you can tell what that actually means is that you only from your from your personal experience right how can you convey yourself the best I think the cool thing about art in general is art forces you to be yourself. Yeah, hey. Yeah. I When I really started trying to get better as a fine artist, sketching and, and drawing and all that, I spent a lot of my time kind of looking up to role models, mm -hmm. um, looking at, you know, these fantastic just prolific artists who just seem to every little line every little detail that they add is so perfect like you look at the work of kim jong gi oh, yeah. or carl kapinski or any of these kind of fantastic sketch based artists and they're just so comfortable with their craft um and i kind of got lost in that in that feeling of well i need to live up to that i need to like be like that mm. and it got so tiring and i think ultimately it's because like you're just meant to do <laughs> your your own thing and to force yourself into a sort of box that you're not really meant to fit in just taxes your system so heavily and yeah. now that isn't to say that copying other people's styles isn't really valuable as something that you can learn from and then transfer over to your own work 
but my real biggest gains and the part where I started really enjoying myself was when I let go of those feelings of needing to kind of live up to something. Um, and I stopped entirely looking at any reference for my artwork. I stopped um, using any form of social media. I just took some time to just sit back and just let whatever it is that I was kind of meant to create come out and kind of culture itself. And then after that point, I've been able to, once I've kind of found myself more comfortable in my own style, then I'm able to go and look at these role models more objectively and, and view what they're making in a kind of, not as like a competition, but as something that's really awe-inspiring and makes me want to do more of my own stuff rather than make me want to put down the pencil. <laughs> no, I, I, I totally get that. Like, so my goal with this, like I said, I don't know if I'll ever be a great penciler, sketch artist, or whatever. That, that's not really my goal per se. My goal is to get better and to learn something and maybe become competent at something. Right, just even competent, right? Because again, every like, um, I wish I could show you what I'm where I'm working on my book called Lights Out right now. Right. right, I'm using a lot of surreal like artist imagery, like blank canvases. But the like, I put the blank canvas on its end, and everything and everything I'm 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 doing with it came as a result of everything I've done here, right? It just like I the imagery I came up with. Um, it's like, it's amazing to me how much just doing the what little I've done with this has already impacted some of my other art, right? And that, and for that alone, this has been worth doing, right? For me, um, now I might get really good at this. It's, it's entirely a possibility, but I'm not really worried about that. What I'm worried about is just having fun. Absolutely. And you know what? I think that's the best place you could possibly be yeah. in terms of your relationship between yeah. yourself and your craft is to do it for the love of it. Because when you're in that space, you've got the most amount of um, endurance to do more. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that process of being consistent and just like challenging yourself is where you'll really just kind of make leaps and strides and improving is when you can just kind of keep consistently going at it. Yeah, that's it, right? I'm not, like I said, there are, like I said, I, I want to do comics. So then I mean, this is, I mean, this is also giving me a lot of insight, like when I write scripts again in the future, right? This yeah. Is ton of insight that I never would have had, you know, any other way, you know? Yeah, so it's, that, it's, it's that kind of, yeah, everything kind of feeding into itself. You just become a more diverse, cultured human being by learning different things. Yeah, so I gave myself one second here. Yeah, no, he's really, really good. Or Highland Fire, he really, really is. And, uh, yeah, so it, it, it's one of those things I just realized. Is, it just, I'm going to have fun. I may never be what some other people on here are, but I'm not really worried about that. What I'm worried about is, can I have a good time doing this? And mm -hmm. because really, it, at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. And it, that gives me so much joy to hear that, <laughs> honestly, because I, I just know that with that mindset, you'll you'll go so far. Yeah, you'll you'll do so many things that you might 
otherwise be kind of like almost intimidated to do because you're comparing yourself to other people. Well, I had to learn it. I, I didn't get there overnight for sure. Ah, that was a mistake. That's okay. I'm going to make a six legged dog instead of a four legged dog. That's what I'm going to That's going to be fine. I, I, no, because it's one of those things where I just look at it and go, so my Dr. Seuss, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be six, a six legged dog because of where I accidentally put some of the feet. Instead of erasing the accident, I'm going to embrace the accident. So. Happy little accidents. Oh, yeah. My favorite accident of all time is chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> is is there a story behind that where chocolate oh, chip I, cookies yeah, invented? Yeah, it's, it's a very neat story. Like, honestly. Chocolate chip cookies was an accident. It was not by design. Someone just accidentally put um, cookie dough, like chocolate chips, in the cookie dough. Wow! The, the magical origin of the magical origin of chocolate chip cookies. It was a happy accident, which goes to show you that, that sometimes the smartest thing you can do, and I've learned this in my whole life, is embrace your accidents. Because if you, it's, can, if you it's can, honestly some of the just the best things have come from that. Yeah. Those accidents, right? Our tape was an accident. Right? So. <laughs> and look what, look where duct tape has gotten us. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's incredible. Oh, oh, sorry. Not, 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 not duct tape, post-it notes. Post-it notes was an accident. Post-it notes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, you know, I, how would they have left a note on that ukulele? Yeah, exactly. To get me into playing guitar. Yeah, if there weren't exactly. post-it notes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I love that. It's an, it's amazing to me. Um, but looking at my Grinch, the the one I'm sampling, which is of course Dr. Seuss, because if you're gonna if you're gonna steal from the grip the best, you might as well go for the very best. Right? Yeah. Yep. The lines on the Grinch tell tell the story with him. I'm actually amazed how much the lines on his face and in his neck and everything else adds age to him, makes him look even more vile than than he'd have been any other other way. And it's amazing to me. Well, and what's cool about I think that style, you know, I haven't looked. I can't say that I've looked at the Grinch in the last yeah. very recent time, but. I can imagine that those lines, that line work is very specific. Would that yeah. be correct? Yes. It's it's not like he's a realistically shaded character. Oh god no, that's those, that part about him. Those lines hold a lot of weight. They pull a lot of uh, weight. And I think that's so interesting. Like you can sit down I think there's a specific image that I'm thinking of, but someone drew the silhouette of like a woman's back with just like just the most bare like line work just a single line for like the outline of her left arm and the curve of her back and then some shading for her hair being like held up by her arms she's lifting her arms up and with so little like just such a very simplistic um outline of form you get a whole character a whole person that yeah. conveys emotion conveys you know a story um that you can connect with yeah and i i honestly think that that piece was probably done in like minutes oh, it yeah. probably didn't take you know an hour of them sitting there just like carefully drawing the curve of, of their neck it was just like choo, choo, done and that's so fascinating to me that and i think that only comes from having really deep knowledge through years of practice um of like what is important and what you can get away with 
um, yeah. because you know you know what's essential in conveying something, right? Yeah. But I feel like that ties into sort of what you've been talking about with all of these characters um, conveying, you know, very clearly an emotion, like yeah. um, the Grinch is evil, and oh, he yeah. is evil in his his eyes and his grin and and all of these things yeah. that come together, but probably if you took away the wrinkles on his face, he wouldn't look half as evil. No. Not evil at all. Exactly. It's and all actually, in that detail. What I'm doing right now is I'm adding, I'm adding a lot more, a lot more lines in him right now. Like I said, is this as good as Seuss's? No. Technically speaking, not. But I, I mean, I'm, again, every time I do it, I've under, I understand a little bit more why certain things work the way they do. And it's amazing to me because it's not, it's not, um, it's not difficult. It's just, it's just, it's simple on one hand. And on the other hand, yeah. it's like, wow, like you, you can see kind of where, like, I just figured out how to make it. I figured out wrinkles on a hat, and it's not hard. It's lines. It's just a little line work, yeah. but. I never would have seen in that had it been for years. Now, one of my criticisms I'm going to have to work on is is lightening the use of my pencils, so definitely. But I can't wait to show you what I came up with. All things considered, right? I came up with a six-legged dog, poor six-legged dog. But yeah, you know, besides that, I'm actually really happy, and I'm not really unhappy with it. It actually still works, even with the six-legged dog. Um, it's the Grinch. It's the Grinch. A, a silhouette of the Grinch just tying up, um, tying up the uh, the dog's the antler, the halfway antler in there, and it wasn't that hard really. It's just a little, a little line work. Right. It's amazing, right? Yeah. Uh, it's 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 the quality, it's the knowledge behind it that creates that final product, where yeah. it just is so. It's not perfect, but it 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 so eloquently does the job that it sets out to do. Mm -hmm. and, I, I, and and it's amazing. I just I just did a little experiment. I just figured something out, um, just off the top of my head. It was just it wasn't a big. He, he, he's yeah he's really good at what he does he's really really good at what he does um but that's the idea behind it wow so that's my first mr grinch you want to see it sure give me a second here <laughs> yeah so i don't know if you can so can we that's my Mr. Grinch, the six-legged dog. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Not bad, huh? There it is. It's good. I'll yeah. have to, my angle right here isn't so good. So yeah. I'll have to take a closer look. Yeah. And so once we're done, but uh, yeah, you've, you've accurately depicted him. Yeah, he is an evil, evil dude. Like, just so... And I love that picture in particular because it shows just... There's also this underlying, like, puppeteer aspect to him that just makes it go, oh, you're an evil, evil man. And I like it. But, I mean, you're... I mean, that's part of the fun of Mr. Grinch. I'm going to go back to you here. You, not to me. To, me, to him. Because... Because... You're just amazing at what you do. Oh, thank you. Yes. Like you have much more practice than I do, and and and, it, and I don't feel bad at all saying that. It's like you've done a very good job depicting that. I'm just gonna watch you work for a little bit because I think I, I, I like I said, it's always interesting to see what everybody else brings to the table. So, yeah, and you know what? Actually, I always liked watching other people draw. Yeah, 
I found it to be a very kind of peaceful mm -hmm. meditative thing. I would watch my mom draw. And I actually find that, you know, they've done these studies from, I think it had to do with um, basketball, mm -hmm. where basketball players would warm up and they've got different players to warm up in a different way. One team warmed up um, by actually physically like practicing drills of shooting hoops. Um, and then their control um, didn't practice at all. They just started a game or started like a drill um, trying to score as many three pointers as they could. Um, just with no warm up, and then the other team tried to visualize in great detail the actual shot itself in their minds before they went up and and did any physical shooting, and they found that the players who had imagined shooting hoops had performed very similarly to those who actually physically warmed up. They got just about as much out of just imagining the process and imagining how it would feel as the people who actually were there doing it. And I find that absolutely fascinating that you can just kind of reap the benefits of doing a thing by just imagining yourself doing the thing because to your brain it's almost the same thing yeah there are like again t techniques it, i think the one thing the one thing you can't um you need practice with the body is technique but in terms of the result right um in terms of result it's it, a lot of what we do is mental, man. Everything, like on some level or another, it's all about whether you, you know, show up and do um, do some things, and if uh, you're willing to get the job done. And that that's basically a lot of that's just getting in your head and having the discipline to do it. The physical doesn't matter. The stresses don't matter. It's are you here to do the task at hand? And that doesn't just apply to art, it applies to everything. Yeah. 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 So I'm gonna do one more and then we'll call the official we'll call the official end to it. I'm gonna do another Mr. Grinch. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I, I said I do Mr. Grinch and and and, and I, I, I mean to keep my word. Um, <laughs> it's been fun. Like I said, I've been learn. You learn. You learn by doing, right? So oh, yeah. I, lost, I dropped my pencil somewhere here, real quick. Looking for the pencil. Where did I put that? Ah, there's the pencil right in front of my face. Of course. And Mr. Grinch is a mean one. He just he just does his thing all the time the power of stories like i'm just gonna segue this a little bit there is a fellow at my high school um an older gentleman i believe his he went by the name of uncle hal and he would come around to all of the local high schools in the area and would just show up at the school unannounced and would just walk into a classroom and the classroom would just stop. And the reason being was that he was a storyteller and he would show up and he would have baked goods for the teachers and everyone would just kind of sit around this guy and just listen to him speak. And he would tell like kids stories to these high schoolers. And it was incredible how, how, you know, people who you wouldn't really think of as being able to sit still for that long um, or appreciate something like that. We're just dead silent. Like we're completely enthralled by this guy 
just recalling these stories. And one of the stories that he would always tell every year was the story of the Grinch. He would come in around Christmas time mm -hmm. and, and tell the same story. And I think he was a real inspiration for me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I haven't done a lot of creative writing. Um, I do some for like accompanying a piece, but for me, that kind of instilled the idea that, you know, if I can capture someone's interest, if I can hold their attention and kind of convey to them something that clearly with my artwork, I think that would be such a cool thing because what he did was so, so different. Like, oh, yeah. You're just, you know, you're at school, you're, well, I was bored. <laughs> well, <laughs> it would no, be in like a social studies people, class. Hey, 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 most of us that go to school are bored. That's not, yeah. that's not really, let's be real here. Um, most of what we're getting, and this is, I mean, this, this, we're not going to go into the politics of it, but most of what we get at school does not actually seem to benefit in the real world. Basically, they should just skip a lot of what they teach us and just give us the piece of paper. Save, save, save some permission issues down the road for everybody involved. <laughs> Great. Right. I'm not, but but I'm not. But I'm. By the way, if anybody listening to this, I I love to learn. I love. I don't. I don't not advocate learning. It's more, you know, um, how you learn. Yeah. I I I feel pretty strongly about that too. Just. Because I think everyone has a different way of learning mm -hmm. and thrives in a different environment. I did not thrive in a school in a school curriculum based environment. I, I, I think had the intelligence to do well, but I am partially dyslexic and paying attention when um, lots of kind of like heavy, words are being used in a like a class kind of setting was really hard and uh but to to tie that back just the way that this guy changed that so quickly like if mm -hmm. if he was teaching the class <laughs> you, you i i think i think i would have gotten a lot more out of it <laughs> hmm. well so I try, I went to I went to the Grinch by Chuck Jones instead of the the Grinch by Dr. Seuss. Chuck, okay. And I didn't do quite. I, I don't think I quite got it the same way, which is totally fine. Like I said, I'm doing this to have fun and to learn. I, again, I don't mind showing my. Like I said, I knew doing like when I made this decision to do this on the air like this. There would be some weeks I would do fantastic. Yep. And every some weeks. It, it just it just won't work you know the way i imagined it will it would work yeah right well that's just organic right oh, absolutely no wait again everybody it, everybody runs into that oh yeah it's it's not even so much that it's it, like i said i just look at the fact that hey i i'm doing something new not everything i'm going to do is going to be good it's just not and that's all right too, but I can still learn from my mistakes. And that's the important part. It's not, it's not getting it right. It's what can I learn? Because in this life, you get a lot wrong. You really, really do. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to fix a smile. I think that's part that really annoys me about it is I went a little too happy. Well, I mean, recognizing the key parts that you can work on is like half the battle. Oh yeah. If you, if you, I, I remember getting supremely frustrated at this. I would, I started off with anatomy. I thought, well, what's, what's the pinnacle? What's the hardest thing that I can throw at myself? <laughs> while I'm kind of trying to learn fine art 
Um, and that I thought at the time was, yeah, like drawing the human figure. Um, and I, I just remember getting so frustrated sometimes because I, some days I'd do well yeah, yeah. and I'd be happy with what I did. And other days I'd do really poorly and I would get really frustrated and I didn't know why. And that was the key pit there was that I didn't know why I was not succeeding at the drawing. Um, coming back to it now, like looking at some of those drawings, it's like, oh, well, you know, I didn't have adequate knowledge of like the structure of the face and like where the muscles are and how to align everything and make it look kind of realistic. But at the time, I just didn't know any better. Oh, yeah. But... So the fact that, you know, you can just, like, be in a place where you're like, okay, this is what is creating this difference in my piece and what the master is that I'm trying to imitate is, like, you're already kind of getting the benefit of doing the copy <laughs> by by recognizing that. Yeah. Well, you got, well, I think you got to learn, you got to learn somewhere, right? Before I create my own stuff, I got to learn, I got to learn what worked so well. What did they do that was, that made that work? And sometimes it's as simple as, okay, this the reason this works is because of this. And sometimes the reason it works great. And sometimes it will work terribly right and, but again this is one of those things where actually i think my big advantage about this is about doing these is i'm not worried about being good and that's i think I, and, and that's actually i think it's surprisingly an advantage right because it, it's basically saying you know what you accept that you're not going to get it all right the first time or the second time or the third time what you're, trying to, what you're just trying to do is you're trying to figure out how to be better. So that's it's sort of like it's sort of like how do you, how do you get better at getting up and yeah. skating? You have to fall. Exactly. <laughs> you have to fail. <laughs> exactly. And, like, and, and I did my second piece. I did my second piece. For the most part, I got. I, I am going to probably fix the smile because I, I realize it's such a simple fix. Uh, I got a little too. I got a little too caught up in what Jones did with the with the smile in the eyes, and I went one line. Basically, it's an inch. It's literally one inch is the difference between it looking good and looking, you know. But even so, it's still not bad. You know, all things considered, it's not bad for someone that's just basically doodling. So. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, when and if. Yeah. So, how much longer do you want to go? We we be doing this for a good 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've been um I'm probably about I could keep working on this for a while. I'm probably about halfway done now. Okay, so you're about halfway done. All right. I okay. could I could work I could spend another 15 minutes on it. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, we'll do we'll do fifteen minutes of just more chat, and we'll wrap we'll wrap this up. But okay. uh, that will wrap the pot the show up. You can obviously go keep going as long as you want, right? It's your, 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 yeah. Your, yeah, yeah. But uh, not I can, that I have not enjoyed enjoyed chatting with you. I'll be right back while you continue that there, and I can come back. Well, you know, I'm looking for an eraser. I am going to fix that smile. It bothers me just a little bit. So wonderful. So I'm kind of doing things a little bit backwards in this piece. Um, working from the front to the back. Now, you know, you could say that's wrong, but sue me. I like trying different ways of kind of approaching a piece. 
And uh, in this piece, what I'm kind of aiming for is a sense of depth. Yeah. I'm going for a sharp foreground where everything is fairly clear and readable. And as things go further off into the distance, become less and less apparent, less and less defined, so that you really get a sense of maybe this is like a foggy um, forest scene, yeah. or you get a sense of, of the scale that um, there's a lot of uh, just the size of the trees is apparent those kinds of tools i think are so so important yes I me mean, oh there we go we started to destroy the, the smile as i knew it there you go so, so chuck jones there we go much better although much better but just just that little piece just moving it a different way right mm -hmm. and i realized how close the grinch is down actually to a to a cat it's really really that's close. isn't that right huh yeah that kind of smile yeah and it's kind of the lips too right yeah he, it's easy. what is it the the who's the who's yeah. down in Whoville. <laughs> they yeah. kind of have this upper lip thing, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's something in there that kind of gives them that look. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. So yes, I, I've drawn dragons, My Little Pony, and Mr. Grinch. I think I think I've done a pretty good job so far of uh, of how do I put this expanding my artistic repertoire and going with the classics. <laughs> oh yeah. No, that seems like a good uh, a good repertoire. Yeah. So, how many how many drink and draws have you done? You're my third you're, you're my third. Like Okay. Third, yeah. Okay. Although uh, officially for the podcast, you're my second. So, right. Rich Perot too. Rich Perot just just uh, he just beat cancer. It was worth it was worth doing a drink and draw on a Wednesday to celebrate. That's so powerful. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean that that's why I, I you saw that one, right? Just like yeah, like that the the crazy demonic Mad Max pony with Castle Grey Skull. I mean that was that <laughs> one of my favorite hours ever I've ever done on this show. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, I, I don't know, like, like I'm, I'm tempted, like, my Wednesday, I've kept my Wednesdays open on purpose, right? And I'm not sure what to do with the Wednesday. I was thinking of making it a Patreon-only kind of show, but I've certainly right. enjoyed the, um, like, I may just make it a random day. Like, and I won't do it every Wednesday. Days off are good. I have other things to do. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> But uh, I, I really just dig the fact that on the stream, at least, I mean, I get to talk to so many, many interesting people. And, and I, I'm actually, I think the biggest surprise from my end is how many people are just saying yes to this. You know? Uh, That's cool, hey? Yeah. It's just not, I, I didn't, I'm booked till February right now. And I could actually start booking February right now if I wanted to, right? Wow. So, well, I mean, I think it's such a it's such a powerful thing that you're doing too, right? Yeah. You, I mean, you are an artist and a creative. And so in some level you must understand how how important it is that you kind of put yourself out there and and kind of engage with the community um because you you need that community, right? You need that mm -hmm. that engagement. So, yeah, I mean, I think, I think for me, like I try to just say yes to things yes. and especially like Rachel referred me to you and, you know, only had good things to say about the podcast and, and you as a person. So it was a no brainer. 
but you know, if I didn't know you at all, if you just reached out, like somehow found my social media page or mm -hmm. or whatever, I think I would still definitely do it. Mm -hmm. I think most people are kind of in that boat where they just, you know, it's you're doing a service, right, by kind of engaging with with artists and kind of giving them a platform to share. Yeah, well, that's the idea. Like I. Uh do it like so i i said become a freelancer this year and it might have been my my goal this year and i'm doing some temp work with it with a day job at the moment but i know like in my soul that this is a very temporary situation on it right and that's on purpose i don't want it to be permanent i want to do this and my writing and everything else i'm doing that like that's what i want to make my living at like I, I don't know about you I'm, I'm too old I'm too old to work for people I'm, I'm much more I much would rather have fun and have people support the fun I'm making because I think what I do is as you say is a service and yeah yeah and uh, that's that's kind of like I think it's really I think it's really fascinating the other thing I'm, I'm gonna have to experiment a lot more the eraser is powerful <laughs> It is, it is another drawing tool and yeah. it's kind of a misunderstood thing. And I'll probably actually get to doing that at some point because this is such a kind of a misty kind mm -hmm. of background that I'm creating here. Mm -hmm. um, what I'll probably do as a technique is kind of blot out the background. And then once I've got the background dark I will take away to create definition in the trees and in the background yeah. um, rather than adding it yeah because I'm just watching I'm watching what you're doing and I'm like wow he, he's it's almost like the piano keys the pencils the black keys and the erasers the white keys and, <laughs> yeah or or no. or it's the other way around actually the pencils the white keys and, and the erasers the black keys on the piano I haven't actually, I don't think I've actually used the eraser yet. Yeah. Um, on but this I, piece. The, no, but, but I just thought there's something you were doing, something you were doing just made me think of, but imagine, just imagine the eraser in there. It's like, oh yeah, God, using, he, he uses it in, in his stuff and it never occurred to me to do that. And Oh, like, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, I think, and especially for creating line, like, so what I'm seeing here, I don't know how well this is conveyed across. Mm -hmm. Wow, you've done a lot more work than the, the, the yeah. Your lamp, your lamp's kind of obscured some of what you've done, but not fully. Okay. Like, yeah. Let's see here. Can we... Although I just learned something about light as well. That is really like you. I, I, like when you watch this, when you like. Just a reminder, look around the 132, 45 mark when you went and you shifted the light. It's amazing the effect that had on your work. So Okay. Yeah. I, I think I, I think just from a just from a even just you, you might know know what to expect when you see it, but even so just to watch that in action is fascinating. Yeah, it's it's um I was kind of hope because I'm using my lamp, which is the light that I'm used to using for sketching and working at my desk, yeah. um, is is taken out by holding the phone. <laughs> no, 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 so. no, no. I can see it. I can see it better now. Like now, we're in the current position you are. But like you, yeah, you've put quite a bit of work into that. Like holy, like thank you. Yeah, it's um yeah, and it's a small piece. Like this, this, this piece here. Um, this is a five by seven, mm -hmm. but it's kind of, I had the, the layout of everything there done probably within half an hour. Um, and then proceeded to spend probably another three or four hours filling that in. It's kind of endless, the amount of time that you can spend adding to a piece that you can just keep layering on detail and and adding to that kind of um the shading and the line and kind of like the background here is quite 
undefined. There's a lot of, um, and that'll kind of come through more now, but um, I can tell already that when that background is more kind of reaching a stage of being done, that I'll want to come back to this foreground and just really beef it up, mm -hmm. bring it all up to the same sort of level so that it's cohesive across the whole side. And uh, I hope I don't take too long. Were you hoping to get a finished piece out of <laughs> No, no, no. Is that usually no, your goal? No, no, it doesn't have to be a finished piece. The idea, okay. the idea behind the drink and draw is that just, the, just the general idea behind them is it accomplishes two goals. I, I, I thought, because I, since I shifted my podcast to a visual podcast, I know a lot of illustrators who aren't always comfortable speaking. Right? Right. But this, yeah. this is universal. People can see what you're speaking about in action, if that makes sense. That's really the goal, the first goal. Second Absolutely. goal the second goal is because again, I don't know how talkative necessarily like a lot a lot of artists are shy. Like a lot of especially like yeah. people that, right, they're very, very, very shy. And I can crack that ice on my own. I, I think I think you'll agree I'm pretty good at this talking thing. But uh, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, and you've done a really good, I think, a really good job of just asking good questions and being insightful. Yeah. So I just listen. It's, you know, that's the whole of my secret, my friend. Is just you just learn to listen. So what what we've done here, although this is still technically an interview, right? It's even it's a little looser than my normal interviews. Even my normal interviews right. are pretty loose too. Right, they go wherever we're gonna go. Like the first forty minutes is pretty much my standard style, but this is a little different. This lets you. This is how you express yourself most comfortably. So, and I thought, like, since I'm in a visual place, and I know a lot of illustrators that illustrate, this makes you more comfortable. That even though I right in a way that. Even though I know, I think you'd be a lot more, I think it's a lot easier for you to talk to me than when we started, for sure, right? Um, this is still always going to be your most natural element. And it forces me to come out of my comfort zone at the same time. Oh, yeah. So that, that's the and It's that's, kind of, it's, it's a kind of a insightful process, like, I don't think I've ever recorded or had any um, documentation of me creating a piece before. This uh, actually a couple of weeks ago, I've I've started a bit of a collaboration with a local company, and they're doing like a bit of a kind of a film project, and so I got to do a, a piece for them, and that was I think the first time that I got to sit down and and um like with a camera <laughs> someone like that with that pressure on me to sit down and actually create something of my own and i gotta say i i've uh, i've actually enjoyed it mm -hmm. and i found it more more intuitive and more natural than than i thought i thought i might you know have some issues with the pressure or not being able to concentrate but I'm not actually having that hard of a time. I guess because I'm comfortable enough with well, the with the pencil. Also, it's also, I think, though. Okay, so in I don't know. Is this more comfortable than when you actually were filmed by the studio crew? Um, yeah, I think so. Okay, okay. I, I I have two theories of me uh, on why, uh, like why, uh, actually in general. I don't think it matters if you're recorded or not. I think the thing about you is, it's about getting into your rhythm. Something we talked about earlier in, this, in the uh, podcast is once you're in your rhythm, it doesn't matter. Like the recording doesn't matter. The, the audience doesn't matter. It's you right. the drawing. That's what this is about for you. It's you and the piece you're doing, right? It's not about whether, and don't get me wrong, 
people are watch have watched this entire episode, which I think is really cool. Um, right? Um, that's a very oddly faith rewarding for me too, because I like, this is my eighth stream, so it's not like I've been doing these very off. Like I've been doing them regularly for the last two weeks, but I'm establishing a brand new paradigm for me. So I'm not quite. I'm never sure how that will be received. And yeah. I'm happy it's being received as well as it has been, if that makes sense. Um, totally. And number two, I'm willing to kind of meet you halfway. I don't draw very often. And I can't say I don't draw well anymore because I don't know if that's actually an honest application. But I'm, I'm not going to say I'm an expert or anything like that either. I'm just someone seeking to be competent in another, in another discipline is basically what I'm doing. But by being that openly, I think, comfortable with being uncomfortable, I think it gives people permission to kind of just do their thing. Totally. Yeah. 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 And it's also, you know, there's that barrier of, like, I am just sitting in my room, <laughs> yes. in my normal art space that I create all of my, my work. Um, so it feels fairly normal. I don't feel, I don't feel like I'm. Maybe if I was like on a stage with like spotlights oh. shining down. On oh, that, 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 <laughs> that, that, that that's totally unnatural too. It's like what the fuck? Right. right, right. It would take. I think I, it would take a lot of time to to have that feel like a normal. But here, you know. Yeah, there's, good. there's no there's no expectations about your um about the results. Like I said, I mean we're, we've come to the point where we're we're going to come to the end of the we uh, um we're coming to the end of the official like drawing drink and drawing part of this where we go drawing and wrap up. It doesn't mean that the piece is going is done by any stretch of the imagination. So, and when it's over, I imagine we'll just keep working on it. Oh yeah, I'll I'll finish this piece. Yeah. Um, I I had the idea that I would paint these pieces because I think painted um, the color works better. It stands out more in a frame. So that's probably what I'll do. Um, though the level of detail that I'm adding to this piece, um, I'm not sure if it would work or if it would convey as well as a painting. Um, so what I'm doing here is a funky little, I'm, I'm using my finger as a smudger. Yeah. A smudger is a great tool, but I find that you can run into issues where it leaves an edge whenever you stop. And I don't want that. I don't want a hard edge. I want it to be super subtle, super soft. Um, I'm just kind of laying out this kind of misty background and so what i'm doing is i'm i've just took like a softer pencil this is um 6b and i've just created a little patch that i can rub my finger in get some graphite on and then use that as my smudger and that's a really good way of just kind of getting a really soft transition in there just to fill in the background with with value. Nice. That's something I have to, look, I have to work on in the future. Yeah. Yeah, but good, sir. So I think we're going to go back. Good to, to, we're, good we're, to leave it there. We're good to leave it there for now. And not that I, by all means, I'm, I'm in awe, but we have been going for quite a while. Oh, yeah. And, and <laughs> I don't want to hold you up. While. So I, I think, I mean, so you can shift back to regular thing. I mean, this was. A lot of fun drink and draw as they, as, they, as they say so and that was the draw and we've definitely had some drinks of tea because we were, were badass like that so <laughs> i didn't so this one's not cool i i didn't the smile got me on this one okay yeah the smile got me on that one and i could tell i could tell it because chuck jones had put a smile right at the eyes like the, the green went all the way up there. And when I actually did to do it, I accidentally went a little too far. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. But the rest of it, actually, I'm actually quite, I, I now know how to make, I now know how to, know how to make like, like those really, really foily 
those those really crappy Christmas like um uh, those really crappy Christmas uh like the little the, the white the white stuff now I just realized that the, oh it, yeah it's basically giant clouds is what it is like I, I get yep. that now yeah but uh, I learned some I learned a lot actually doing this and uh, thank you for being a part of this wonderful little experience with me uh, thank you for having me i'm yeah. sorry i kept you so long no it's not no this was this was no dude it's not get so it didn't keep me so long we, we had a good time i just want to make sure that there was we talked so much in the first hour that i just want to make sure there was a decent amount of drawing time in the second there's a okay. good back and forth yes it really really was i did i did want to say though um like you do guitar work you do um artwork how can people find you yeah so i've i've been really close to having a website up hopefully it'll be up in the next week or so um if if so um it'll be harms guitars or joshua harms fine art and i'm on you know the typical social medias i'm on instagram mostly and also on facebook so Josh, uh, so, Joshua Harms Art is your name. Joshua Harms Art on Instagram yeah, yeah, and yeah. Harms Guitars, H A R M S. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, on Facebook as Joshua Harms Art. Yeah. So, so anyway, so in February or March, because that's where I'm at in terms of it, would you like to come back and actually do just a more traditional interview? Absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's just fun. I am still jealous of your beard. I am some totally, jealous, <laughs> totally, totally jealous of your beard. It's like that's right. You, you, you're definitely, you're definitely. Actually, actually, the, the the final, the final thought is, I think the final question I'm going to have is, you do a lot of stuff. Like, what, what is the story you're seeking to tell people about yourself? If you have to sum it all up, oh, I don't have to sum it all up. Well, I think it's a little bit different for the guitar building and for the artwork. For the artwork, throughout all of my different pieces, I, I like having a sense of peace. Mm -hmm. That you can look at it and it just kind of is this still scene. It just kind of brings you back to just imagine yourself sitting in a forest, just kind of taking it all in. You can hear it around you. That's what I want to kind of have you feel through through the paintings and, and the artwork even i even do portraits and it's kind of the same sense that i want to convey and through the guitars it's it's this kind of freedom to create i want to create a blank canvas for you to kind of build your sound off of um i, I think that i think that covers it that covers it that covers it i think so well, then, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the stream. Stay with me. Don't disappear on me. You <laughs> talked a little bit after the stream is over. Um, for, I was going to ask some stuff with Richard, but he just disappeared. It's like, no, I needed to talk, but it's all good. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this was fun. Uh, my next week's drink and draw is Mock Park. Uh, next week is when the stream returns. And uh, if you want to listen to my podcast, you can check out any app. I'm on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Deezer. Follow my YouTube, hit the subscribe button for my Twitch to keep keep growing as a, I'm on my way to being an affiliate. I've actually already made a pretty good dent at that. Oh yeah. yeah. Congratulations. I'm at, well, almost there. I'm, I, I, I'm at, as of right this minute, I'm at 15 followers. So, I mean, it, I mean, considering that 50 is the magic number, it's not bad for two weeks, I don't think. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you know, you'll, you'll keep kind of upping your game and it'll only get better. It'll be awesome. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm really excited for you. I think this is a really cool thing that you're doing. Yeah, well, it's a, I, I, so I think this is like the some the only thing I'm going to tell you. You are the guitar. You, you are you are the creative guitar rock and rolling, tree loving, individual that you are. That's your niche. Own it. Walk it. The hardest thing about being a freelancer for me was recognizing what my niche was. I interview people. I thought that's my goal is whatever I come up with my niche is going to be so I can interview people and do this for a living when I really just said, you know what, fuck, fuck anything else. Just interview people and just let that and believe it's worth something and let people find you. And that's and that's kind of been what I've been doing. Yeah. So 
that's been the goal, and I think it, it, it will grow as time goes on. So, beyond all that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. I want to thank Josh for coming on board. Yeah, right, and like I said, I'm still jealous of the of the long hair and beard. I'll, I'll have to deal with my insecurities on that. Twice <laughs> oh. the age almost, and I can't do what he does, right? But um, that all said, that all said, um, they inspired everybody. Uh, keep surfing the chaos, shine in the darkness, and I'll be back Monday with my next guest. It'll be fun. Next week's gonna be another fun week. And until then. Keep on rocking. Thanks, Josh. Keep on rocking.